the late 80s, the arcades were booming again with players and new games coming regularly competing for the lucrative and resurgent gaming industry. While the majority were adventure action games or shooters, a new type of video games was making its debut with the release of the 1987 Street Fighter game. Developed by Capcom, this simple and often underrated game led to the flourishing of the fighting games genre. Street Fighter was spearheaded and produced by young Takashi Nishiyama and Hiroshi Matsumoto. Nishiyama was not new to the fighting and action games as he worked on the 1984 Kung Fu Master game by iRim, a game that many see as the true first fighting game. Unlike traditional action games, Street Fighter allowed players to fight one enemy at a time in a two-round style combat. The addition of the player versus mode was the first step towards the competitive scene we know today. Following the modest success of Street Fighter, Takashi Nishiyama left Capcom and joined a new and emerging software and hardware developer, SNK, previously known as Shin Nihon Kikaku. SNK was not new to gaming. The company have made some very successful arcade games in late 70s and early 80s, like Vanguard and Ikari Warriors. And after making profits porting their old games to the then very popular NES system, the company would decide to enter the home and hardware market with a bank as they introduced their new hardware in 1990 known as the Neo Geo. The Neo Geo was designed as both an arcade system in the form of the Neo Geo MVS as well as a home console in the form of the Neo Geo AES. Both hardware used the same components, offering for the first time the ability to have arcade level graphics and gameplay at home. With its brand new system now released in the arcades, SNK saw potential in the new 1 vs 1 fight in general and were willing to bet on this new type of games that they greenlit a number of projects that would use the idea of versus fighting and even try to evolve it further. Seeing how Nishiyama already proved his skill in this emerging type of games, SNK gave Takashi the green light to work on what he envisioned as the spiritual successor to Street Fighter. And the next step for fighting games, Garu Densets, or as we know it in the West, Fatal Fury. Contrary to what many believe, Fatal Fury was being developed at the same time as Street Fighter 2 at Capcom. In early development, the game's original title was Real Bout, a title that will be used in some of the sequels of the franchise. Wanting to differentiate itself from its competitor Capcom, SNK would push for a detailed, story-driven franchise to let their customers invest in the game's lore and setting. Fatal Fury gave players the ability to select from three distinct characters, Terry Bogard, the game's protagonist, his brother Andy, and their best friend Joe Higashi. Each of these characters come with their unique playstyle and special moves. And speaking of moves, and unlike the original Street Fighter, doing these special attacks was made easy, with the intention of letting players throw fireballs, rising tackles and hurricane uppers almost at will. The gameplay of Fatal Fury followed the typical formula of Street Fighter, as it allowed the player to compete against his opponent in a best 2 out of 3 round matches. The play controls consist of an 8 directional joystick and 3 attack buttons, A, B and C, A for punches, B for kicks and C to throw the opponent. As in the original Street Fighter, each of these playable characters have special techniques that are performed by inputting specific commands and combinations with the joystick and buttons. 
While as previously mentioned, these maneuvers were easier to pull compared to the first Street Fighter game, the input methods for the special moves were shown to the player during the course of the game, specifically after every bonus round, as opposed to being given in an instruction card on the game's cabinet. Speaking of bonus rounds, after a number of matches, the player enters a mini-game mode called the bonus round, where he or she will need to win an arm wrestling contest against a machine. The player will need to press the A and B buttons as fast as they can in order to win the contest. The biggest addition and new aspect that Fatal Fury introduced to the genre was the inclusion of a two-lane fighting system. The player can jump from one lane to another to avoid projectile attacks or knock their opponents to the other plane. This new mechanic was unheard of and would become the staple of the series, for better or worse. Multiplayer mode was a highlight in the first Street Fighter game, allowing two players to test their skills against each other. For Fatal Fury, Nishiyama decided to spice things up. When a second player joins during the middle of a fight, instead of postponing the current battle for a match between the two players, the game will make both players team up against the current CPU opponent in a two-on-one match before the battle takes place. While the game offered only three characters to choose from, playing the arcade mode will pit you against seven unplayable warriors. Richard Meyer A capoeira master originally from Brazil, Richard makes his daily living in Southtown as the manager of the restaurant known as Pau Pau Cafe. He competes in the King of Fighters tournament in order to make his capoeira style known to the world. Michael Max a pro boxer who was once considered a strong contender for the title of worldwide heavyweight champion. However, he left the boxing circuit to seek real combat and participate in the King of Fighters tournament, feeling that professional boxing was a mere sport protected by rules. Duck King A dancer and fighter that possesses incredible talent when it comes to brawling and street dancing. Duck King once challenged Terry Bogart to a street fight and lost. He trained himself in order to surpass Terry and hopes to do so at the King of Fighters tournament. Duck uses a unique fighting style which includes a rhythmical dance-like movements and attacks. Tang Fu Ru, an elderly martial arts master from China who developed his own fighting style based on Bai Ji Quan known as the Holy Fist of Eight Ways, the Hakyoku Seiken. In the past, he trained Terry and Andy's adoptive father Jeff Bogard and his nemesis Giz Howard. Tunk helped raise the Bogard brothers for a while after Jeff was killed by Giz and now participates in the King of Fighters tournament with the objective to defeat Giz. He can change his body size and draw great power using a deadly secret technique known only to himself. Hua Jai, the first of three opponents the player faces before the final match against Giz Howard, a former Muay Thai champion once nicknamed the Hero of Muay Thai. Jai once fought against Joe Higashi in the past and lost, causing him to lose his title. Seeking to defeat Joe, he became a more reckless and dangerous fighter. After being banned from competing in the Muay Thai circuit, his brutal talent was noted by Giz Howard who hired him to serve as one of his bodyguards and as a participant in the King of Fighters tournament. His special technique, the Dragon Kick, was developed to compete with Joe's Tiger Kick. He also gains additional strength by drinking a sort of super drink, which is thrown at him by one of Giza's men. Right then. The second of the final four computer-controlled opponents in a single-player mode, Raiden was once a popular wrestler until he was betrayed by his tag partner during a match. This incident transformed him completely. Not satisfied with venting his frustration in the ring, he enters the King of Fighters tournament as a masked fighter acting as one of Giza's bodyguards. Billy Khan 
a British orphan who grew up in the street. Billy moved to South Town and thanks to his street fight abilities, quickly caught the eye of Geese Howard, who made him his right hand man. He uses a Sunset Sukon as a weapon. Once all of these fighters are defeated, the player will have to face the powerful Geese Howard himself, in an outstanding setting that goes hand in hand with the game's story. Story-wise, the game takes place in the fictional city of South Town, USA. Terry and his younger brother Andy were orphans, who grew up in the streets of South Town. Their rough childhood will be left behind when they meet Jeff Bogard, a martial artist who decides to adopt the young siblings. Not only did Jeff Bogard give his new sons his name, love, and a warm home, he also taught them the art of Hakyoku Seiken, which literally translates to Eight Extreme Holy Fists, a formidable martial arts style that Jeff learned from the legendary master Tang Furu. Jeff trained with Master Tang for years alongside another student, Geese Howard. Unlike the calm-natured and compassionate Jeff, Geese had ulterior motives, anger issues, and evil intent. Which was the reason why Tang Furu decided to only show the last technique of the Hakyoku Seiken to Jeff. An act that made Gi so jealous that the latter decided to kill Jeff. It would take years before Gi would act on his hatred to Jeff, but when he did so, he did in front of the eyes of the young Bogart brothers. After finally finding a home and a loving father, Terry and Andy are now orphans again, just moments after witnessing the gruesome death of their adoptive father. Vowing to have their revenge against Geese, Terry and Andy decide to each take on a different path of training and hard work and to come back to Southtown in 10 years to take on the rising crime lord, Geese. Terry finds the Hakyuku Seiken master Tang Furu and spends 10 years training and traveling from place to place. While Andy moved to Japan and learned the art of Kempoken from another legendary master, Hanzo Shiranui. Ten years have passed, and the two brothers, along with Andy's new friend, the Muay Thai champion Joe Higashi, are back to South Town, just in time for Geese to announce a new martial arts tournament, the King of Fighters. The trio decide to enter the competition in hopes of reaching the finals and defeating Geese once and for all. To put more emphasis on the story, SNK decided to publish a free mini-comic explaining the lore of the game. The comic was drawn by famed artist Chinkiro. The same type of promotional material would also be used for SNK's other fighting game series Ryoko no Ken, also known as Art of Fighting. Fatal Fury was released in the arcades on November 1991, eight months after the release of the Behemoth Street Fighter II. Even though not offering many playable characters as its competitor, Fatal Fury still received mainly positive reviews as the first fighting game for the brand new Neo Geo gaming arcade and home system. According to Japan's Game Machine magazine, by January 1992, Fatal Fury was considered the third most successful arcade unit of the year. The game was also met with positive reviews when it reached the US in 1992 as it received 5 out of 5 score from GamePro. The main reason for the game's massive success was how the players resonated with the characters' deep stories and serious personalities. The first Fellow Fury game would receive a couple of ports outside of the Neo Geo family in the form of a Super Nintendo version, a Genesis version, and even a Sharp X68000 port. The Super Nintendo version of Fatal Fury was published by Takara, a toy company turned game publisher and one that would go on to port multiple SNK titles for the home market. Developed by Nova, Fatal Fury on the Super NES was published in Japan in 1992 and in North America during the following year. This version discards the two-lane system in favor of a more conventional one-lane plane. 
the two on one battles are gone and the arm wrestling bonus rounds are replaced by new bonus rounds involving the main character punching flying tires. In the game's versus mode, all of the CPU controlled characters are playable, but only on the second player's side. Players also could pick the same main character, which was not possible in the arcade version. The Mega Drive and Genesis versions were released in 1993, published by Sega in Japan and by Takara in North America. This version removes the characters of Hua Jai and Billy Khan from the roster, having them only appear as background cameos. Instead, the player faces against the other two main characters during the course of the single player mode. This version allowed both players to play as the CPU controlled characters in the game's versus mode and even Geese Howard was playable via cheat code. A Sharp X68000 version was produced by Magical Company and was released in Japan only on May 1993. This version was almost an identical copy to the Neo Geo Fatal Fury. As a way to cross-promote its new fighting game, SNK teamed up with Fuji TV to produce a TV special based on the story of Fatal Fury. This 45 minutes long anime would use the talent of famed director, artist and producer Masami Obari. Masami-san was in charge of designing the characters for the anime as well as plotting the story for the movie. Released in 1993 on Fuji TV, the anime was a modest success and did help make Terry a memorable character in the minds of his targeted audience. The anime followed the story of the game almost perfectly, as SNK was strictly involved in the scripting process and wanted this first TV experience to be as close to canon as possible. All the characters from the first game made an appearance in the anime, with some restricted as cameo. A brand new character, Lily Maguire, was created for the TV special to serve as Terry's love interest. Masami Obari's original plan was to have Lily be Billy Khan's sister. However, after multiple deliberations, SNK decided to not have Lily as Billy's sister in the anime. Coincidentally enough, Billy Khan would later get a sister in the game series that also happened to have her name be Lily. While the Fatal Fury series would later get a number of manga adaptations, the first game would only see a very loose manga version months after the game's release in the form of the obscure and odd Bonbon Garu, written and illustrated by Yuji Hasui. Although his comics only follow the first three games, the author's goal for the manga from the get-go was that anything is possible, with little continuity made with the series' original story. As such, the manga have gained a cult status with the Japanese fandom for its irrational script and nonsensical plot. With the successful release of the first game, the Garu Densetsu series was distant for bigger, better, and more known sequels, as Fatal Fury King of Fighters will prove to be the beginning of SNK's fighting genre's dominance. With the first Fatal Fury released and receiving rave reviews, SNK knew they are onto something and that they have laid out the ground for a long and successful franchise. But with the first game being released around the same time as the behemoth Street Fighter 2, it was only natural for gamers and reviewers alike to compare the two titles. And while Fatal Fury had more personality and deeper story as well as a unique gameplay mechanic, the game lacked in terms of playable characters and versus mode play. As Street Fighter 2, offered 8 unique fighters compared to the Fatal Fury trio. SNK knew that they would need to add more characters and amp up the ante to be able to take on Street Fighter and to offer a sequel that both old and new fans would enjoy. With that in mind, work on Fatal Fury 2 began few weeks after the release of the first game. The plan of SNK was to take the first Fatal Fury and use it as a foundation then build on it by adding new gameplay elements to make a better sequel. It didn't take long for SNK to make their fans know that a second Garu Densets is on the way. While still being involved to some capacity, series creator Takashi Nishiyama would not take the role of the game director and producer, as that role would be filled by the SNK father figure and founder, 
Eikichi Kawasaki. It wouldn't take long for SNK to start showing their new game, now officially titled Garou Densets Tsu Aratanaru Tatakai, or Fero Fury 2, the new battle for the rest of the world. At first glance, it was clear that SNK wanted to take on Capcom on Street Fighter 2. Much like its competition, Fatal Fury 2 offered 8 playable characters, including 1 female, hidden bosses, and a well thought of 1 vs 1 mode. As the release of Fatal Fury 2 was getting close, SNK prepared a bold marketing strategy, including few live action TV ads. SNK. A mini manga illustrated by famed SNK illustrator Shiroi Eiji was also published in gaming magazines serving as a prologue to the game and a bridge from the first Fatal Fury. Fatal Fury 2 hit the arcades on December 1992 in Japan, 13 months after its predecessor, and took SNK's fame to a new level. In terms of gameplay, Fatal Fury 2, which was the second game in SNK's 100 Megashock line, offered easier controls, better graphics, and more variety. One of the major changes is that the game now uses all four buttons of the Neo Geo by including four attack buttons, a low punch, high punch, low kick, and a high kick. The two-lane system has been expanded, allowing the players to knock their opponent to the other lane. Moving between lanes is now done using the combination of LP and LK. Additionally, some stages have hazards, like electricity, or even raging running endless bulls. While these hazards limit the gameplay to a one lane only, pushing your opponent against one of these makes them lose life meter and could help shift the battle to your advantage. And speaking of meter, Fatal Fury 2 borrows the desperation move that debuted in the first auto fighting game, as now every character has the ability to perform a super move when their life meter is flashing red. The game also introduced a parry-like system and the first of its kind in fighting games, known as defensive attack done by pressing forward and A right after blocking an attack. Bonus stages also make a comeback in Fatal Fury 2, albeit quite different from the first game. While in the first Fatal Fury, the bonus game had the player pressing the A or B buttons multiple times to win an arm wrestling bout against a machine, in the sequel, the player comes through two bonus games, the first one after defeating the fourth opponent, and it consists of having the character attempting to smash all 10 stone columns within 60 seconds. Each column must be struck twice on its upper and lower halves to be completely destroyed. The second bonus stage happens after the 8th match. In this one, the player must smash all 10 stone brick piles within 45 seconds. Each entire pillar must be struck repeatedly to be completely destroyed. After smashing a column, another one falls randomly on the arena. The player must also be careful not to be hit with any of these bonus stage items. In terms of characters, the Bogart brothers Terry, Andy, and their inseparable friend Joe Higashi are all back for more brawling, and joining them are five other colorful playable fighters. The most notable one is the game's first female fighter, Mai Shiranui. And if Street Fighter had Chun-Li as the sexy female fighter, SNK was about to take sexiness to another level with Mai.
She is the heiress of Shiranui clan of ninjas and Hanzo Shiranui's granddaughter. She met Andy Bogart during his training with her grandfather and fell in love with him. Believe it or not, Mai was not even planned to be in Fatal Fury at all, as her fighting style was created for a different male ninja. When developers shifted their focus to include an idol character in the series, they decided to scrap the Shiranui man for Mai. Her characteristic bounce was loosely modified from the method of assassination of a Kunoichi, which is a female ninja, to be sensual to their unassuming prey before they strike. Besides Mai, these are the rest of the new characters to join Fatal Fury 2. Kim Kapwan A Taekwondo master from Korea, he strives for excellence and righteousness in everything he does, be it his fighting or personal life, besides having an inherent and strong sense of justice. Big Bear A massive wrestler who was confirmed to be Raiden from the first Fatal Fury, he changed his persona after the defeat of his master Geese Howard and is now one of the good guys. Cheng Xinzan A wealthy businessman who trained along Jeff Bogart and Geese and a former student of Tang Fu Ru. While a strong fighter, his motives are always dictated by greed and the need to make more money. Jubei Yamada a judo master who used to be nicknamed the demon back in his younger years. He also trained Mai Shiranui at the request of her grandfather and his personal friend, Hanzo. Axel Hawk, a former heavyweight boxing champion who was banned from the ring due to his violent tendencies. He was hired by the game's boss to be one of his three defenders. Billy Khan. The British Bowmaster is back in Fatal Fury 2 as one of the three defenders of the game's final box. He is now faster and stronger than he was in the first game. Lawrence Blood, a former bullfighter easily capable of gracefully dodging the charges of bulls and killing them with one stroke of his sword. Due to his family having strong ties with the game's boss, he is his head of security and one of his three defenders. Wolfgang Krauser The game's final boss, named the Lord of Darkness, Krauser is a descendant of a glorious family known as Stroheim. He holds a prestigious upper status with leaders of the world. He also happens to be Gies Howard's half-brother. Krauser decides to host the King of Fighters tournament in order to lure the fighter who defeated Gies so he can test his strength against him. Story-wise, Fatal Fury takes place few weeks to months after the first game. The defeat of Geese Howard gave the Southtown citizens a breeze of new air. Terry was regarded as a hero of the city, and fighters from around the world would travel to challenge the man who defeated the powerful Geese. Upon hearing the news of his half-brother's defeat, Wolfgang Krauser, heir to the powerful Sorheim family, would decide to test Terry's skills. Along with his three enforcers, Krauser hosted the new King of Fighters tournament and invited old and new competitors. Just like in the previous tournament, the Southtown trio of Terry, Andy and Joe have decided to enter the competition and see who's the mysterious organizer known as Wolfgang Krauser. Not only was Fatal Fury 2 a step up from the previous game in terms of characters and gameplay, but the graphics and sound saw a significant upgrade. The sprites are more detailed and colorful and animate better. The stages are busier and offer interactions with the player. And the music was a memorable selection that rivaled Street Fighter 2's catchy character themes. Fatal Fury 2 was released on the Neo Geo MVS and AES on December 10, 1992 and proved to be a great success for SNK during the 1993 fiscal year. 
In Japan, Game Machine Magazine listed Fatal Fury 2 on their February 1993 issue as being the most successful table arcade unit of the year. Western publications like GamePro Magazine also praised the game for its action-packed gameplay, great characters and animation, as well as amazing sound, calling it a fantastic sequel. Fatal Fury 2 would see numerous home ports, but not until early 1994. The game was released on the Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, X68000, PC Engine, and even the Game Boy. The Super Nintendo and Genesis versions were published by Takara while the X68000 version, released only in Japan, was published by Maho Kabushi Kigaisha, known as Magical Company. All three versions allowed the player to control the four bosses via their own respective codes. The PC Engine version was published by Hudson Soft, only in Japan, and was one of the first games to require the arcade card add-on for the system. To coincide with the Japanese release of the Super Nintendo version, Hori Electric released a special controller called the Fatal Fury 2 Commander, which has the special moves and supers of all the game's playable characters programmed in so that they can be triggered with a single button. Not very competitive. The Game Boy version was titled Netto Garou Densetsu Ni which can be translated to Dead Heat Fighters Legend of the Hungry Wolf 2. This exclusive to Japan portable port was developed by Takara, the toy company that will be considered as the most successful porting developer for the Game Boy when it comes to fighting games. The Game Boy version of Fero Fury 2 featured super deformed style graphics and also allowed the player to use the four boss characters. Considering the Game Boy limitation, it was an amazing feat to have the game's large roster complete with their special moves, personalities, cool looking stages and music. But sacrifices had to be made. For example, all voices have been removed. But in their place, the characters have speech bubbles when performing a special attack or desperation move. This port also features support for the Super Game Boy peripheral for the Super Nintendo. Similar to what we saw with the first Fatal Fury game, SNK greenlit an anime adaptation by the same name. With the success of the first Fatal Fury anime, Masami Obari was once again hired by SNK and Fuji TV to adapt this second game. SNK and Fuji TV allowed Obari's team to take whatever liberties they thought were necessary. Their only request was to make the story lovable for already established fans of the franchise. The company's support was also backed by the fact that Obari and the anime director Furahashi san were already fans of SNK games who wanted to do the characters justice. The main focus of the second anime was to expand Terry Bogard's character arc. Since the first installment was to introduce Terry's beginnings as a legend, this entry's goal was to show his normal lifestyle and him dealing with his newfound fame. Furuhashi and his crew wanted to depict a believable what-if situation of Terry losing, hoping to explore a new side to his character. The planning process for this character arc eventually led to the creation of the original character Tony, a decision that is still debated by fans to this day. Another big priority during development was Mai Shiranui. Since her debut in the games had skyrocketed the series' popularity, developers were a little nervous on how to naturally introduce her in the darker story they had planned. This problem was solved when one story planner suggested on featuring her love for Andy, giving the audience breathing room and comic relief in between Terry's brooding moments. Obari had little problems with designing her and was adamant in his feminine design for Mai. To better fit with the gorgeous and sexy Mai, 
Andy Bogart was redesigned to look more like a pretty boy, a contrast to his vengeful and hateful self from the first anime. One of the biggest differences from the Fatal Fury 2 game is the youthful appearance of Wolfgang Krauser. This was a decision made by the team to better fit their image of his character. Since Krauser is always more talented than his half-brother Giz, Obadi thought it would be a greater insult to Giz if Krauser also stayed eternally young and more attractive than his relative. Although more faithful and older looking designs of Krauser were made during the pre-planning stages. Besides the new anime, Fatal Fury 2 also received a number of manga adaptations. These include some comedic coma mangas or short stories, a new volume from Bonbon Garu by Yuji Hasui where more insane plot twists took place, as well as a new volume from Kei Ishikawa's Garu Densets Senritsu no Maomachi, where our heroes have to fight monsters from other dimensions. But none of these adaptations would come even close to the Garu Densetsu ni manga by Kei Mondo. The two volume manga can be seen as a more faithful adaptation as it follows the story of the game more closely. All characters from Fatal Fury 2 make an appearance during the events of the manga, with some having more important roles than others. Fatal Fury 2 was without a doubt a success for SNK. It took everything that worked in the first game and made it better, and was a true rival to Street Fighter 2. But by the time it released, Capcom started something and seen in video games before, a gameplay update to their already released games. After Street Fighter 2 was released, Capcom immediately began working on an updated version dubbed Street Fighter 2 Dash or Champion Edition. This version offered playable bosses, increased speeds and minor gameplay changes. Not to be outdone by its biggest competitor, SNK announced only a few months after the release of Fatal Fury 2, an updated version of the game titled Fatal Fury Special. Kakumega Shock Neo Geo. SNK. But unlike Capcom, SNK will not only make the bosses playable, but will also add more characters, a guest fighter, new stages, gameplay changes, and more. Fatal Fury 2 was without a doubt a success for SNK. It took everything that worked in the first game and made it better and was a true rival to Street Fighter 2. But by the time it released, Capcom started something and seen in video games before, a gameplay update to their already released games. After Street Fighter 2 was released, Capcom immediately began working on an updated version dubbed Street Fighter 2 Dash or Champion Edition. This version offered playable bosses, increased speeds and minor gameplay changes. Not to be outdone by its biggest competitor, SNK announced, only a few months after the release of Fatal Fury 2, an updated version of the game, titled Fatal Fury Special. But unlike Capcom, SNK will not only make the bosses playable, but will also add more characters, a guest fighter, new stages, and gameplay changes. The biggest change that Fatal Fury Special brought was adding more playable characters. First, all the bosses from Fatal Fury 2 are now playable, which includes Billy Khan, Axel Hawk, Lawrence Blood, and the mighty Wolfgang Krauser. But that was not enough for SNK as they brought back three characters from the first game, now redrawn and reimagined in the style of Fatal Fury 2. These characters are Terry's master Tang Furu and the breakdancing fighter Duck King. The third character was none other than Fatal Fury's ultimate boss, Giz Howard.
In terms of gameplay, Fatal Fury Special is faster than its predecessor when it comes to characters' movements. The biggest change, however, comes into the form of a combo system where you could link moves and cancel some into others. The number of line move attacks have also been increased. Pressing the light punch or light kick button while the opponent is on an opposite lane will perform a low line jump attack. Game balance was also adjusted, which gave the game a competitive side that is still alive to this day. The single player mode has the player fighting all of the playable characters, beginning with the 8 regular characters from the Fatal Fury 2 game, as well as Tang Furu and Duck King, with the player given a choice for the first opponent. After the first 10 enemies, the player will fight against Billy, Axel, Lawrence, Geese, and Krauser in that specific order. If the player wins every match in two rounds only, then he will be challenged by Ryo Sakazaki in a special dream match. The inclusion of Ryo Sakazaki from the Art of Fighting series was so well received that it was the basis for SNK to work on a team-up franchise featuring characters from its library and hence the idea of the King of Fighters franchise was born. Similar to the previous games, SNK released some very amusing live-action TV spots to coincide with the release of Fatal Fury Special. オオカミは眠らない。ガロー伝説スペシャル。いくつもの伝説が生まれ、そして消えてゆく。狼は眠らない。ガロー伝説スペシャル。SNK. The fun did not stop there as SNK decided to include a number of very fun Easter eggs in the game. Like a flying Kim Cup one. dancing ducks, and more. Fatal Fury Special was released in the arcades on September 16, 1993, followed shortly by a Neo Geo AES version before hitting multiple home consoles. Upon its release, Fatal Fury Special received rave reviews and was met with great reception. It would take the game only a few weeks to be crowned as the most successful arcade machine in Japan as per Game Machine magazine. The game would stay in top 5 charts of best arcade game for a very long time, and it would also rank as Japan's third highest grossing arcade game for the following year. In North America, Replay Magazine reported that Fatal Fury Special was the seventh most popular arcade game of 1993. Magazines and publications worldwide praised the game's fluid animation and gameplay, as well as the big variety of characters, special moves, music, and overall fun. The game had playable ports for the Super Nintendo, Sega CD, and Game Gear. 
as well as the PC Engine, the X68000 and FM Town's computer platforms in Japan. All that between 1994 and 1996. The Game Gear version was quite the highlight of the home ports releases as it offered and paralleled fighting game experience on a handheld. Developed by Takara, this version offered 9 playable characters including the game's secret guest character Ryo Sakazaki. While many of the Fatal Fury special's memorable roster was missing like Kim and Krauser, the detailed graphics, music and beautiful stages made Fatal Fury special on the Game Gear as the most faithful adaptation of the old Fatal Fury games on handheld. Fatal Fury Special will also receive a direct manga adaptation by Mondo K. The single volume manga is a direct sequel to the author's Fatal Fury 2 manga and deals with Giza's return as well as the implication it brings to South Town, Terry and to Wolfgang Krauser. After the release of Fatal Fury Special, SNK announced that they are working on a new anime project for the series, but this time, unlike the first two direct-to-TV movies, Fatal Fury will be heading to the big screen with Fatal Fury the motion picture. Released in 1994, the third and last anime adaptation of Fatal Fury by Masami Obari was an original story not based on any of the games. The story of the movie revolves around the favorite heroes of Terry, Andy, Joe and Mai trying to help the original character of Sulia stop her brother and his henchmen from collecting the powerful armor of the fallen god Mars. Most of the cast of Fatal Fury Special made cameos during this movie. Originally, Masami Obari and his team had a completely different storyline for the anime. The planned story was to have the Fatal Fury heroes team up with Ryo Sakazaki to defeat Mr. Big. Planned characters from Auto Fighting included Eiji Kisaragi and King, but plans were scrapped in favor of an original story and characters. Fatal Fury the motion picture was considered a modest success in cinemas and has recently been re-released in high definition on Blu-ray. Fatal Fury 2 and then Special made sure to cement the spot of the Fatal Fury franchise as an important pillar of the fighting game genre. SNK knew by then that Terry and his friends could be as memorable as Ryu and Ken when it comes to fighting game character icons. More than a year has passed since the 1993 release of Fatal Fury Special, and while the game was still very successful in the arcades, fans of the series were wondering about the next chapter of the franchise. And while 1994 saw no new Fatal Fury game, fans of these iconic characters were able to play some of them in a brand new game that would soon revolutionize the fighting game scene, The King of Fighters 94. a team-based fighting game that would take SNK to new heights of popularity. SNK, knowing the importance of the Fatal Fury franchise, decided to dedicate a full team from the 8 teams roster to Fatal Fury. Team Italy consisted of Terry, Andy and Joe. But that's a story for another video. Fatal Fury Special has recently celebrated its 30th anniversary. The game is currently available on many modern platforms. The early Fatal Fury games made sure to cement the spot of the Fatal Fury franchise among the important and famous series of the fighting game genre. After the success of Fatal Fury Special, SNK knew that they had to work on a new sequel. In 1994, SNK was ready to show the next installment of the Fatal Fury franchise with a release stated for Q1 of 1995. SNK was promising brand new gameplay mechanics and unparalleled graphics for the new game. 
Unlike Fatal Fury 2 and Special, series creator Takashi Nishiyama will return to the producing helm of this new title, and this time he is joined by the Art of Fighting series director Hiroshi Matsumoto. While the developers had ambitious plans for this new sequel, an unexpected event took place that would directly affect the development of Fatal Fury 3, the Kobe earthquake. In January 1995, a 7.2 magnitude earthquake hit in the southern part of the Hyogo prefecture, resulting in the death of over 6,000 people and massive economic impact. Many companies were shut down in the neighboring cities including Osaka. The event forced SNK to cut few planned features from Fatal Fury 3 which was due in only two months. On March 1995, SNK released its new highly expected sequel titled Garouden Setsu 3 Harukanaru Tatakai, which translates to Legend of the Hungry Wolf 3 The Distant Battle, worldwide known as Fatal Fury 3 Road to the Final Victory. Final victory. It was clear that this was a different game than its predecessor. Dubbed as the next evolution of the series, Fatal Fury 3 used brand new sprites that were redrawn from scratch and graphics that looked more detailed and colorful. As it became almost a custom, SNK would advertise the new Fatal Fury 3 with some more over-the-top live-action ads specifically for the Neo Geo CD version. The characters of Fatal Fury 3 looked bigger and more buff, and the stages were a sight to behold. Even the character select screen was an original take on the previous game. As for the sound, while the game's themes would not rival its predecessors, Fatal Fury 3 introduced voiceover acting on some cutscenes 
which was new to the series. The graphics were not the only thing that saw an overhaul with Fatal Fury 3, as the gameplay was heavily changed from the previous installment. While the game retains the format and controls of the previous chapters of the series, the two plane battle stages have been revamped into a three plane format known as the Oversway system. The player fights primarily in the middle plane, also known as the main plane, but can move or oversway into either of the background using LP and LK, or foreground by pressing LK in HP. When the player performs an attack in a sway plane, known as an oversway attack, their character will return to the main plane automatically. Likewise, the player can attack an opponent who is in the sway plane with an anti-oversway attack. The player can also do a quick sway to avoid an attack, leaving the opponent vulnerable to a regular strike. Another innovation seen in Fatal Fury 3 and one that will end up becoming a staple for most SNK fighting games is the ability to control the height of the character's jump. The game also introduced an air block mechanic where players can block an opponent's attack in mid-air. While Fatal Fury Special had an unannounced feature of cancelling some normal moves into others, Fatal Fury 3 was the first game of the series to officially introduce move cancels known here as combination art, allowing the player to cancel a specific series of regular attacks from one to the other. Besides special moves and the desperation moves which require a red life meter like the previous games in the series, Battle of Yuri 3 gave each character a hidden ability, which is a stronger version of a super move. This hidden ability occurs once in every 1024 chances whenever the player inputs the command for the character's super special move. This hidden move can also be used by activating the game's hidden super mode before a match using a secret code. The player will then be able to use the hidden move when his character's life meter is flashing red. Unlike super special moves, a hidden ability can only be used once per round. Battle of Yuri 3 also features a fighting level grading system when fighting against the computer. When the player completes a round, their performance is graded from E to S. The final opponents the player faces at the end of the single player mode is determined then by the player's average score. This unique feature introduced a bit of variety when facing against the CPU. And speaking of going against the CPU, the player has the choice between four characters as their first opponent. Joe, Mary, Bob, or Franco. After the first four opponents are defeated, the player will fight against Ryuji Yamazaki for a plot-based match in which the player must win only one round. The player will then proceed to fight against Mai, Andy, Hon Fu, Sokaku, and Giz in that specific order, before Yamazaki again for a full match. Depending on the grade average, the game will end against Yamazaki or the player will fight against either or both of the Jin twins. As for the game's characters, SNK decided to revamp the roster by having half the selectable fighters as brand new ones. Coming back from the previous games are Terry Bogart, the game and series protagonist, Andy Bogart, their inseparable friend Joe Higashi, as well as the ever-popular Mai Shiranui, who proved to be a massive success for SNK and became an icon for fighting games. The last returning character for Fatal Fury is none other than Giz Howard, who is confirmed to be alive and in hiding thanks to the Fatal Fury 2 story. Joining these characters are five brand new fighters that will soon make their mark on the franchise. Lou Mary a freelance secret agent and the second female fighter to join the series. Blue Mary lost both her boyfriend and her father in a mission few years back. 
She meets Terry and the two became good friends and developed a very strong bond. Hon Fu, a detective who is on a case concerning the mass illegal drug trade in Asia. He's always chasing criminals and shares his strong sense of justice with Kim Capwan. Branko Bash, former super heavy kickboxing champion who was undefeated during his fighting career. He retired and now is an airplane mechanic. Sokako Mochizuki, the head of a temple and heir to the clan of Buddhist monks whom are an ancient rival to the Shiranui clan. Bob Wilson, a young Brazilian capoeira fighter and a very cheerful guy. He is the student of Richard Meyer from the first Fatal Fury game and works as a manager of the two Pao Pao Cafe nightclubs owned by Richard. The game also adds three new unplayable boss characters. First, the psychopathic Yuji Yamazaki, an ex-Yakuza with a violent past and now a drug and arms dealer and an influential broker in Hong Kong. He has a rivalry with Han Fu and was hired by the game's two other bosses to protect them and help them find the legendary scrolls of immortality. Jin Chon Shu and Jin Chon Rei, the official bosses of Fatal Fury 3. They are twin brothers that were orphaned at a young age and now have hired Yamazaki to do their bidding and find the ancient scrolls of immortality. The story of Fatal Fury 3 mainly revolves around the Jin brothers. Orphaned when they were just six years old, the twins were left to fend for themselves and work together to survive and live up to their family name as descendants of the celebrated powerful general warriors Quinn Wong Long and his brother Quinn Kong Long. After being left for dead due to a violent attack by bullies, the two boys were possessed by the spirits of their ancient ancestors who used their bodies to look for the ancient scrolls of immortality. These scrolls would allow the two evil spirits to resurrect themselves in immortal bodies and take over the world. For that reason, they hired the Hong Kong Mafia leader Yuji Yamazaki to find the scrolls, which they know are in South Town. Throughout the game, it is revealed that several other characters are also searching for the scrolls for different reasons. If the player did well throughout the course of their playtime, Chon Rei appears and becomes extremely angry at the defeat of his younger brother, promising that the player character will not leave the place alive. Following the brother's defeat, their ancestors' spirits departs from their bodies. In the end, it would be revealed that Giz was the one to gather all of the three scrolls only to realize the prophecy of immortality was but a delusion and ends up disposing of these useless artifacts himself. When it released, Fatal Fury 3 was met with mixed reviews. In Japan, Game Machine listed Fatal Fury Road to the Final Victory on their May 1st 1995 issue as being the second most popular arcade game at the time. And according to Famitsu, the famed Japanese gaming publication, the AES version of Fatal Fury 3 sold over 34,800 copies in its first week on the Japanese market. In the West, reviews were also mixed but mostly positive. The four reviewers of Electronic Gaming Monthly scored it as 7.6 out of 10. They had widely varied reactions to the game and two of them remarked that it lacked the feel of a true Fatal Fury game. Fatal Fury 3 would also mark the first of the series to not receive many ports outside of the Neo Geo family. After the AES and MVS versions, the game received a Neo Geo CD port, taking advantage of the refined audio qualities of the system as well as a Sega Saturn port. Go! The next release of Fatal Fury 3 would not happen until 1998, where the game would get a Microsoft Windows PC release. The game would of course get a release down the line, whether it's on the Fatal Fury Battle Archives compilation on the PlayStation 2, or the various re-releases on modern consoles through the Ica Neo Geo ports on many systems, such as PlayStation 4, Nintendo Switch and more. As for media adaptation, and similar to Fatal Fury Special, Fatal Fury 3 received no animated adaptation. In terms of mangas, they were noticeably fewer than the previous iterations, and these included another chapter of the famed nonsensical Bonbon Garou, 
focusing on alternate versions of the events of Fear of Fury 3. While a more faithful adaptation was also released. Drawn by mangaka Sekiguchi Shun, the single volume manga stayed true to the story of the game. Immediately after release, and seeing the mixed reviews Fate of Fury 3 has got, SNK started planning the next chapter of the Fate of Fury series, and this time, they will decide to go back to the drawing board and work on what many would see as a fresh and bold soft reboot of the series, with the new real bout game. After a successful run of great fighting games, the Fatal Fury franchise showed a bit of fatigue with its latest installment, Fatal Fury 3 Road to the Final Victory. Despite the beautiful graphics and new gameplay mechanics, the title has been met with mixed reviews from both fans and new players. Many complained about the small roster and the lack of legacy characters, while others were not fans of the new gameplay system. SNK, on the other hand, knew that they slightly missed the mark with Fatal Fury 3. This was more apparent from the low sales figures compared to the previous titles. Which is why, immediately after the release of the game, the company started working on the next chapter of the saga, one that was intended to take the franchise to the next generation of fighting games while bringing back old fans to the series. Series original producer Takashi Nishiyama was once again put in charge of this soft reboot. It would not take long for SNK to announce the new game, Real Bout Garodensets, as known in the West, Real Bout Fatal Fury. While fans were stunned by the title change to the series, the title itself, Real Bout, was actually the original working project name of the first Fatal Fury game back in 1991. SNK wanted to emphasize that this new game is a soft reboot, but one that is rooted in the series' origins. Shortly after the announcement, SNK started doing location tests all around Japan to see what fans think of the new direction of the beloved series. In order to speed up the production of the new game, SNK decided to convert and sold ROMs and cartridges from the ill-fated Fatal Fury 3 and upgrade them to the new real bout game. Which is why on December 1995 and only 9 months after Fatal Fury 3, SNK released Real Bout Fatal Fury into the arcades. SNK's plan for Real Bout was to bring back the fan favorite combos and quick play of the very successful Fatal Fury special and combine that with the new graphic styles and sprites used in Fatal Fury 3. To emphasize the beauty of the new sprites and characters' visuals, the design team decided to make the backgrounds darker allowing the action on screen to stand out more. Gameplay-wise, Real Bout changes the play controls from the previous Fatal Fury games, reducing the number of attack buttons from 4 to only 3. A standard punch button, a kick button, a strong attack button which can be either a stronger punch or kick depending on the character, and finally an oversway button, as the game retains the three-plane oversway system from Fatal Fury 3 which features a main lane for fighting with foreground and background planes used to avoid attacks and leap towards the opponent. Characters can however only stay in the background and foreground for a limited amount of time before automatically moving to the main lane. Realbot Fatal Fury also introduced a power gauge which fills up as the player performs normal or special techniques against their opponents or defend themselves similar to many super move gauges featured in other fighting games, like the now very popular The King of Fighters series. The power gauge allows players to perform one of three types of special techniques depending on the level of the power gauge. When the gauge is at least half full and colored yellow, the player can perform guard cancels, which are special counter attacks that can be performed by the player after blocking an opponent's attack. 
These guard cancels do not consume any filled portion of the power gauge. When the power gauge reaches the max level, while the player still has more than half of his life meter, the power gauge will enter into the S power level. The energy in the power gauge will begin to deplete gradually and during that time, the player can perform guard cancels as well as super special moves. However, once a super special move is performed, the remaining energy in the power gauge will be consumed and the meter will return to its initial state. When the power gauge reaches max level while the player has less than half of the life bar, which makes it flash red, the power gauge will go into the P power level. In this state, the power gauge will gradually drain, but the player can perform both guard cancels and super specials indefinitely until the gauge runs out. The player can also perform a hidden ability, which is an even more powerful special move. This hidden super will consume the remaining power gauge at this state. Realbot also introduces stages with ring outs, a gameplay feature previously introduced in 3D fighting games, such as Virtua Fighter or Toshinden. Each of the stage extremities is guarded by barriers. If a fighter's attacks force the opponent to hit a barrier enough times, the latter will be destroyed and the fighter can win by knocking the opponent out of bounds. Speaking of stages, the player will face three characters in the same stage before moving to the next one. While this limited the number of stages, each of these arenas had more than one setting, providing a visual variety. Characters-wise, Realbot Fatal Fury brings back all the roster from Fatal Fury 3, including the bosses Jin Chon Rei and Jin Chon Shu, Geese, and Yamazaki as playable characters. SNK also decided to bring some fan favorites back from Fatal Fury Special. These are Kim Cap One, Duck King, and Billy Khan. While adding Kim was a no-brainer for the SNK developments due to his popularity, they really struggled when choosing the other two characters. First, they were unsure whether they should bring Duck King back or Cheng Xinzan. But during the development and while doing the research, the SNK staff felt that fans were more interested in Duck King and his cool stylish moves. Thus the dancing fighter was chosen instead of Cheng Xinzan. As for Billy Khan, SNK had no intention of adding the British fighter as they planned on adding a new original character. However, strangely enough, the developers witnessed a rise in popularity for the character of Billy Khan during that time and decided to bring him back and even gave him a brand new costume. In terms of story, the fifth game and fourth canonical chapter of the Fatal Fury saga takes place right after the ending of Fatal Fury 3. Giz Howard has successfully collected the three sacred scrolls of immortality that the Jin brothers were after. Believing that he is now powerful enough to take back his town, Giz ordered the destruction of these scrolls which he deemed useless and decided to host a new King of Fighters tournament and one that he would use to get his revenge on the Bogart brothers. Canonically speaking, it is during the end of this chapter where Giz Howard would eventually die and remain so for the rest of the franchise. Although he does come back in the King of Fighters series like King of Fighters 96, 14 and 15, canonically the Fatal Fury and King of Fighters franchise take place in different universes. Fatal Fury Real Bout was released on December 21st, 1995. A Neo Geo AES and Neo Geo CD followed the MVS release by a few weeks. Fans of the franchise with home consoles also had the chance to play the game as it received ports on both the Sega Saturn in September of the same year and on the PlayStation on January 1997. It is worth noting that the Sega Saturn only saw a release in Japan, 
while the PlayStation version had both a Japanese and European release. An American version was advertised alongside the PlayStation port of Samurai Shodan 3 in the King of Fighters 95, but was never released. As expected by SNK, Real Bout was very well received by fans of the series and genre. In Japan, Game Machine Magazine listed Real Bout Fatal Fury on their February 1st 1996 issue as being the fourth most popular arcade game at the time. According to Famitsu, both the AES and Neo Geo CD version sold pretty well in their first week. In the West, Electronic Gaming Monthly gave the Neo Geo AES version their Game of the Month award. The reviewers applauded the overhauled personality of the characters, the high-end graphics and the humor. As suspected by fans, Real Bout Fatal Fury was not going to be the last chapter of the Fatal Fury saga, as SNK was already hard at work on a sequel. And only a couple months after the release of the latest installment, SNK announced the upcoming sequel, Real Bout Fatal Fury Special for a January 1997 release. This new version would take everything that worked on the previous game and add new mechanics while tweak others that were not well received by fans. With Realbot Special, SNK decided to dial back the lanes of the Oversway system to only two instead of three. The fighters always start on the front plane and throughout the battle, they can't change between the foreground and the background planes for strategic fighting and to avoid incoming attacks. Similar to previous games, a character can execute a lunging attack toward an opponent on the opposite plane or force attack them towards the same lane. However, the secondary lane is now a fully functional one. There is no time limit on how long the opponents can stay on the opposite sides. And characters on each lane can perform special attacks, although most of them will only hit if both players are on the same lane. The out-of-bounds rule which allowed the character to throw his enemy from the rings were removed. Replacing them are corner objects or walls that appear on both corners of the fighting field. As fighters are being knocked towards these corners, these walls slowly start to wear and tear. Missed attacks that hit the wall also damage these obstacles. Once the walls have taken enough damage, they will start flashing indicating that they can break with the next strike. Characters driven against a weakened object can smash it, rendering them stunned for a period of time. These destroyed objects and walls will restore between rounds. This was quite the departure from the out of bound which could end a match abruptly and were deemed unfair during competition matches. In terms of playable characters, the game retains the entire cast of the previous chapter and adds four returning fan favorite warriors. Terry's master, Tang Furu, the greedy businessman and another of Tang's students, Cheng Sin Zan, who was considered for the previous game, Krauser's bodyguard, the matador Lawrence Blood, and the Lord of Darkness himself, Wolfgang Krauser. Giz Howard, who was canonically killed off in the previous game, appears in Real Bot Special as a hidden final boss in a special nightmare match and as an unlockable playable character in the home version. The game also features hidden extra versions of existing characters. These variations are quite different from their normal counterparts, with in some cases different moves and properties. The characters with an extra variation are Andy Bogard, Billy Khan, Blue Mary, and Tang Furu. Real Bot Fatal Fury Special marks the second time a Fatal Fury game has no story. In fact, the game is considered a non canonical entry in the lore of the series. Although, its PlayStation port, which we will discuss later, contains an original story. 
And speaking of ports, the game saw multiple releases throughout the years. Following its Neo Geo MVS and AES release, the game was ported to the Neo Geo CD first on March 1997, followed by a Sega Saturn port on December 1997. Come on, well, have a nice day. Both these two versions offered a surprise music video featuring Blue Mary as a bonus. Titled Blue Mary's Blues, this jazz song is a favorite among Blue Mary's fans. A surprise Game Boy release also came out in March 1998, developed by Takara, the toy company which by that time already made quality game ports like Fatal Fury 2, Samurai Showdown 1 and 3, and The King of Fighters 95 and 96 for the Game Boy system. This Game Boy version, titled Netto Real Bout Garoden Sets Special, featured simplified graphics and two-button gameplay. This version, for memory constraints, retains only 12 playable characters. Giz Howard appears as a hidden character as well as Iori Yagami from the King of Fighters series. Surprisingly enough, the game offered the ability to switch lanes which was never done on a fighting game on the Game Boy before. Although simplified in many ways, Real Bout Feral Fury Special on the Game Boy was an impressive feat and one that yet again cements Takara as the king of Game Boy fighting games developers. Another port which can be regarded as a different title in the series is Real Bout Special Dominated Mind for the PlayStation. Released in Japan only in June 1998, this new version of the game brought many gameplay changes as well as two new characters. The game added Alfred who appeared as a hidden boss in Real Bout Fatal Fury 2 which had been released a couple months prior on the Neo Geo. More on it later. The port also includes an all-new boss character named White. Dominated Mind also featured new moves, hidden unlockable super moves, as well as the ability to cancel moves into supers, a mechanic that the game calls Final Impact. And as a surprise change, Dominated Mind did not have the two-lane battle system from the original game and opted for a more traditional and KOF-like experience. The extra variations of the characters that we had in the Neo Geo version of the game were also removed. The story of this version centers around White's brainwashing of Billy Khan an attempted takeover of Southtown's underworld in the power vacuum created by Geese Howard's death. Last but not least, Real Bout's special Dominated Mind featured a beautiful anime opening as well as cutscenes and endings designed by Masanori Shino. Real Bot Special was considered the pinnacle of Fatal Fury. Whether it was the gameplay, the graphics, or the large roster, fans and critics loved the new title. In Japan, Game Machine listed Real Bot Fatal Fury Special on their March 1, 1997 issue as being the most successful arcade game of the month. And according to Famitsu, again, both AES and Neo Geo CD versions sold over 9,000 and 20,000 copies in their first week, respectively. With the latest entry being a success, there was no stopping the Fatal Fury saga, and as it almost became a custom, SNK would announce a sequel only months after Real Bot Special, 
The next title will try to perfect the Fatal Fury recipe to give fans an absolute best title in the series. This game was supposed to have it all. Larger roster, new characters, fast gameplay and overall an awesome game. Jonin Takashi Nishiyama as co-producer was none other than Hiroshi Matsumoto. The two previously worked on many of the franchise's games and both co-produced Fatal Fury 3 Road to the Final Victory. Realbot Fatal Fury 2 The Newcomers is now the seventh title of the series, but canonically speaking is the fifth chapter. Released in March 1998, the game offers the largest roster of the series to date, bringing back all the characters from the previous game including Geese Howard who is now a normally selectable character and serves as one of the standard final bosses alternating with Wolfgang Krauser. The extra variations of characters from Realbot Special was also removed and two brand new characters are introduced, Li Shangfei and Rick Stroud. Li Shangfei is a Chinese American waitress and bodyguard resident of South Town. She was taught various martial arts from a young age and hasn't lost a match since she was 10. She has a nasty argument with her parents and ran away from her home in retaliation. Currently staying with her uncle, she practices several kung fu styles. Rick Stroud is a Native American who worked 10 years of his life as a casino show boxer. He is known as the White Wolf of the Ring. Feeling stifled by his life as a showman, he listens to nature's voice and felt the wind calling him away. The game also features the biplane pilot Alfred, who would later be the protagonist from the real bot Fatal Fury special dominated mind as we saw. In this game, Alfred is a secret final boss. Gameplay-wise, Realbot 2 can be seen as a combination of the first Realbot and Realbot Special. Going back to the roots of the original Realbot game, characters can only stay in the background for a limited time as sidestepping. The walls are also removed altogether from the first two games and instead certain arenas only have one line where oversway moves and attacks that involve changing planes will not work, giving definitive restrictions to potential fighting tactics. Most of the fighting arenas consist of two planes, front and back. The fighters always start on the front plane and throughout the battle, the fighters can temporarily move along the back plane for strategic fighting and avoiding attacks. Each fighter can also execute lunging attacks toward an opponent on the opposite plane or force attack them towards the same plane. Real Bout 2 was also popular for how fast matches unfolded one after the other as you get from winning a battle to the next one in Murphy Sagans. Story-wise, while this game is considered canon, there's not much story going on, except for the character's endings, which offers a glimpse of story in the future of these characters. In terms of ports on other consoles, Realbot 2 had very limited release outside the arcade and the AES system, as it only received a Neo Geo CD port which was released only in Japan a couple of months later, on July 23rd. A Neo Geo Pocket Color game, Fatal Fury First Contact, can be seen as an adaptation of Realbot 2. Released in 1999, the port had fewer selectable fighters than its arcade counterpart. First Contact offered 12 selectable characters and a secret character, Alfred. This version also adds a new character named Lao who is only playable in the game's versus mode. Lao first appeared as a cameo in the opening of Fatal Fury Realbot 2. While considered a success for the company and loved by fans, the limited release of Realbot 2 outside of the Neo Geo family made the game an obscure title among the majority of SNK fans. A broader release of the game would not happen until Fatal Fury Battle Archives 2 which was released on the PlayStation 2 in 2007. 
The release of Realbot 2 marked the end of an era for the Fatal Fury franchise, as SNK, at the time, wanted to focus on a new and upcoming hardware, the Hyper Neo Geo 64. And with Fatal Fury being one of SNK's most recognizable series, a Fatal Fury title for the new machine was imminent. It has now been 8 years since the release of the first Fatal Fury game, and the franchise had over 7 main titles under its belt, multiple ports, and cross-media releases. SNK, on the other hand, has just released a new hardware unit, the Hyper Neo Geo 64, a new high-end arcade unit that was supposed to replace the now-aging Neo Geo MVS and AES systems. SNK had also planned to release a consoleized version of the hardware as well, yet the system was not well received by fans and critics due to multiple reasons, which you can check in the history of the Hyper Neo Geo 64 documentary. The link is above and in the description. The new unit had few games under its belt, and none of them were able to achieve the desired reception nor win fans' hearts, despite heavy hitters like Samurai Showdown having two titles already on the platform. SNK, knowing the massive success and following of the Fatal Fury series, decided to make a new title for the Hyper Neo Geo 64, and one that was supposed to reboot the series for a new generation of fans. Titled Garo Densets Wild Ambition, or as we know it in the West, Fatal Fury Wild Ambition. To take on this important task, veteran producer Hiroshi Matsumoto was chosen as lead producer, along with Seigo Ito and Mitsuhari Inoue as co-producers, both of them having worked on the previous real bout Fatal Fury games. Seeing the game for the first time running on a Hyper Neo Geo 64, it is easy to see how ambitious the design and graphics team were. The game is easily one of the best 3D games of SNK on the Hyper Neo Geo 64. Character movements was also fluid and fast compared to other games on the Hyper Neo Geo, like the two Samurai Showdown games. Released in January 1999, Wild Ambition used the 3D capabilities of the Hyper Neo Geo 64 to power the first 3D game of the series. The game itself is a remake of the first Fatal Fury game making the events that happened during the first chapter, like Guy's falling from his tower to his apparent death, non-canon. The story also changed some key elements, like adding brand new characters to the series, or changing some events from the first tournament, like its name, from the King of Fighters to the King of the Fighters. While Fatal Fury Wild Ambition is a 3D fighting game, the gameplay itself is very similar to that of 2D fighters. SNK decided to keep the same button layout from the real bout Fatal Fury 2 to not alienate fans. A for punches, B for kicks, and C for the special attack, which depending on the character could be either a kick or a punch. The D button, however, which was previously used for the line sway mechanic, or lane change in the previous games, is now called the Axis Shift button. This feature allows players to move their characters to the background or foreground using 3D movement to avoid attacks or circle their enemies. Every character also has an assortment of special moves and desperation moves, now called Super Power Attacks. Super Power Attacks can only be performed when the player's health meter is flashing red, and does not use the new heat meter. The heat meter, which replaces the power meter from the previous games, starts at 50% full at the beginning of every match, though it can't change between rounds of the same match. Players fill the meter by attacking their opponents or taunting them, while taking damage or being thrown decreases the gauge. If a player takes damage but his opponent stops attacking him or her, the meter will slowly replenish to 50% again. When the player's heat meter is filled, the message Max OK will appear on the top of the gauge. Players may then perform an overdrive power or a heat blow. The heat meter will be almost fully depleted if either of these moves are used, but this can also happen if the player takes too much damage or performs numerous counterattacks. If this happens, a danger message will appear. 
If the player takes too much damage, leading to a fully empty heat meter, the character will go into an overheat state. This causes the player to get dizzy, becoming vulnerable to the opponent's attacks. Another new feature introduced in Fatal Fury World Ambition is the guard attack. Blocking an attack at the same exact moment as it hits will not result in any chip damage and results into the attacking opponent being pushed away. This could be similarly compared to a perfect parry from other modern games. A new technique introduced in Fatal Fury World Ambition, which we mentioned before, is the heat blow. This offensive move is an unblockable attack that may stun or launch the opponent into the air when it connects. The player can perform a heat blow when the heat meter is full and in the max OK state. Pressing the A, B and C buttons simultaneously will activate the move. The player can use the heat blow as a counter mechanic by activating it while being attacked by the opponent to interrupt their offensive. Using the heat blow will decrease the heat meter close to the danger state. Fatal Fury Wild Ambition changes the potential power, P power, attacks and renames them to Overdrive Power. Overdrive power attacks work differently from the P-Power attacks of the old games. The player can perform overdrive power attacks once the heat meter is full, regardless of how much health the player has. Using an overdrive power decreases the heat meter close to the danger point as well. In terms of roster, Fatal Fury Wild Ambition took some liberties and changed many of the game's canon to allow for certain favorites to be in this first chapter. First and foremost, we have the legendary trio of Terry Bogard, Andy Bogard, and Joe Higashi. My Shiranui, due to her insane popularity, also makes her way to this Ritcon first episode, as well as Kim Capone. Both of these characters were not part of the story until the second game of the series. Returning from Fatal Fury 1 are Raiden, Billy Khan, and of course the game's final boss, Gies Howard. A surprise return from Fatal Fury 3 is Ryuji Yamazaki, who also now plays a role in the first chapter of the reboot. New to the series are two original fighters, Toji Sakata and Tsugumi Sendo. Toji is a legendary practitioner of the fighting style Dainanryu Aiki Jujutsu. He was once the best friend and the rival of Tatsumi Suo, Blue Mary's grandfather and the man who trained Gis Howard in Aiki Jujutsu. Believing that he was destined to challenge Tatsumi in a death match, this encounter never occurred since Tatsumi was eventually killed by his former student, Gis Howard. Toji enters the King of the Fighters tournament to defeat the man who killed his rival. Tsugumi Sendo is a high school girl from Osaka who was taught wrestling by her father, Kantetsu, since a very early age. However, she is recently ashamed of this, especially after she was told by a boy she had a crush on that women wrestlers are unfeminine and unattractive. After hearing this, she wanted to drop out of her wrestling training. After butting heads with her overbearing father, Kantetsu will allow her to drop out but only under the condition that she brings a decisive victory in the King of the Fighters tournament. Despite her original hatred for wrestling, she has come to enjoy fighting as she begun to win matches. SNK also decided to include a secret character for this arcade version in the form of Li Shanfei, who made her return from her debut game, Real Bout Fatal Fury 2. Story-wise, as previously mentioned, the game is a retelling of Fatal Fury 1, as SNK hoped to reboot the franchise for the new system with 3D mechanics. Geese Howard, the murderer of Terry and Andy's adoptive father Jeff, is hosting the newly announced The King of the Fighters tournament, just in time for Terry's return to Southtown after a 10-year absence. This led Terry, his brother Andy, and Joe Higashi to enter the competition in order to avenge Jeff and save Southtown from the grips of Geese Howard. 
At the end of the game, Geese is not killed North Brown from the building, but just loses to Terry. Unfortunately, the game lacked any meaningful endings, which was a questionable decision from SNK. As previously mentioned, SNK changed the name of the first tournament from the King of Fighters to King of the Fighters, maybe to differentiate between the Fatal Free lore and that of the main KOF series. Six months after the game's initial release, SNK released a PlayStation port of Fatal Fury Wild Ambition on June 1999. This version included exclusive characters not available on the arcade version. First, Sean Fei, who was a secret character in the arcade version, is now a selectable fighter. Giz Howard, the unplayable boss of the arcade version, is also playable from the beginning. In addition, Duck King and Mr. Karate were also added to this port. Mr. Karate is an older version of Ryo Sakazaki from the Art of Fighting series. The PlayStation version of Wild Ambition also included two cinematic CGI intros to explain the setting of the game. The first and longer one retells the events of the death of Jeff Bogard by a young Geese Howard, in front of Terry and Andy's eyes. It also chronicles Terry's return to Southtown after 10 years of absence. While by today's CGI standards, it might not look impressive, the Fatal Fury Wild Ambition PlayStation intro was an absolute stunning video in 1999. The second and much shorter cinematic shows Geese Howard training in his dojo in front of the watchful eyes of his bodyguards, Ripper and Hopper. SNK had big hopes for Fatal Fury Wild Ambition to push the poorly received Hyper Neo Geo 64 system into the spotlight and into the arcades. But due to multiple odd decisions from the company when it comes to the new hardware, Fatal Fury Wild Ambition while seen as a decent fighting game, never reached its full potential. Game Machine listed the arcade version in their March 15, 1999 issue as being the third most successful arcade game of the month. The PlayStation version of Fatal Fury Wild Ambition received mixed reviews. Japanese publication Famitsu gave the game a score of 25 out of 40. If you are interested in the history of the Hyper Neo Geo 64 and why it failed, Check out my documentary about the hardware in the link above as well as in the description below. Seeing how the Hyper Neo Geo 64 was a failure for the company, SNK decided to keep releasing games for the aging Neo Geo arcade system, which it previously planned to retire. And due to the success of the Fatal Fury franchise, it was only natural for SNK to shift some of its resources to work on a brand new Fatal Fury game, one that would revolutionize the franchise and maybe even the genre. Fatal Fury Mark of the Wolves. Mighty. Hoping to save the ill fated Hyper Neo Geo 64 arcade system, SNK decided to bring a new reboot of the Fatal Fury franchise in 3D in the form of Fatal Fury Wild Ambition, as we previously discussed. But while SNK had hopes that this new game will somehow put the Hyper Neo Geo 64 in the spotlight, 
the company had doubts that a 3D fair of Yuri will be well received and decided to work on a separate project simultaneously. One that will stick to the company's roots with beautiful 2D sprites and interesting gameplay mechanics. Which is why a second team within SNK, also led by Hiroshi Matsumoto as producer, was working on a sequel to the 2D Fatal Fury games. The idea behind this title was to take the series to the future and focus on new characters. Fans of the old cast would still get their favorites in the short-lived Wild Ambition series which was planned to retell the franchise in 3D graphics. To design this new sequel, SNK turned to veteran designer Yasuyuki Oda, as well as the talented in-house artist Nobuyuki Koroki. The goal behind this new game's direction is to reinvent the series for a modern audience, including introducing a new hero for the franchise. The team quickly agreed on using a plot point introduced in Fatal Fury 3 Road to the Final Victory. In that game, Terry meets a young boy, who was revealed to be Geese Howard's son. Designing Geese's son, now named Rock, was no easy feat. Both Nobuyuki Koroki and Yasuyuki Oda wondered what type of hero would succeed Terry Bogard in Fatal Fury's latest game chapter. While they were not confident with Rock, they still decided to make him as the new protagonist. Rock was a contrast to previous characters from the franchise, which pretty much all had a masculine and very muscular build. Rock, on the other hand, will have a more bishonen appearance, something Nobuyuki Koroki felt that the sequel needed to balance the cast and address an issue the artist felt the real bout series suffered from. Multiple designs were made for Rock Howard before agreeing on the final one. Some earlier editions had Rock Howard sporting Terry's famous red cap, as a symbol of passing the torch between the protagonists, but the idea was scrapped for the final looking design. Speaking of Terry, updating the iconic red jacket and cap was a priority for the team, as they thought his iconic look was becoming a bit outdated, and it was time to give him a redesign to go with the planned evolution of the franchise. Thus his new look with the bomber jacket was decided upon. The philosophy of having less muscular and macho characters influenced the rest of the cast, as many of the new designed fighters were quite unique by the previous Fatal Fury game standards. SNK decided that besides Terry Bogard, the rest of the cast will all be brand new fighters to the franchise, with some related to old characters. This was a huge gamble for SNK, and one that had the potential to alienate the existing fanbase, but SNK believed in their incredible designs. And speaking of designs and looks, SNK wanted this new defining chapter of the long-running Fatal Fury series to look like nothing before. An emphasis on the character idle animation was so important that it would be a deciding factor on how a character moves and behaves within the game. SNK's plan was to create a game that would stand the challenge of time. Since 3D became an important technology of the gaming industry, SNK decided to use 3D elements in the backgrounds of the game. But unlike what some games did, SNK made sure that the 3D elements seamlessly blend with the 2D graphics. Utilizing pre-rendered 3D graphics rasterized as sprites gave the illusion of 3D depth and semi-transparency, resulting in jaw-dropping graphical presentation. On November 26, 1999, SNK released its latest Fatal Fury game, Fatal Fury Mark of the Wolves, or as many know it, Garou Mark of the Wolves.
Gameplay-wise, SNK decided to completely revamp the mechanics of Fatal Fury, and for that reason, the company fully removed the lane systems for a more traditional one-lane system, similar to the very popular The King of Fighters series and the real bout special dominated mine port from the previous year. While many were surprised by the removal of the lane system, the main reason was that the developers did not see the need for it anymore. The lane system was originally introduced in the very first game of the series to simulate a 3D movement of the character. This of course was done years before the introduction of 3D within the game industry, but with 3D fighting games, now a popular subgenre, due to the success and popularity of franchises such as Tekken and Virtua Fighter, SNK saw no point in keeping the limited and simulated 3D gameplay and decided to focus on a traditional one-lane system with an innovative gameplay mechanic. Similar to the lane system, SNK decided to use a King of Fighters inspired button layout. A for weak punch, B for weak kick, C for high punch, and D for high kick. At the heart of Mark of the Wolves gameplay system is the TOP gauge mechanic, which stands for the Tactical Offensive Position System. After choosing a character, players are presented with the strategic choice to position their TOP gauge at the beginning, middle, or end of their character's health bar. When a fighter's health enters the designated white TOP zone, which then glows orange, they are empowered with enhanced capabilities. Their attacks inflict more damage, they experience gradual health recovery, and gain access to a powerful TOP attack by pressing C and D. This attack can deal a decent amount of damage and significantly deplete an opponent's guard meter when blocked. However, once a character's health dips below the TOP zone, these boosts are lost. Garou Mark of the Wolves also introduced the Evasion attack. By pressing A plus B, the character performs a slow starting move that has the potential to evade low attacks and sweeps. A high evasion move is also possible, which is done by pressing down plus A and B. This move is great as an anti-air. The high evasion move can be cancelled into a faint move. Speaking of faint moves, these are partial attack animations of a special that does not do any damage. The role is to confuse the opponent in reacting to the fake move and follow with a counter-attack. Feints are done by pressing forward or down along with A plus C. The game also offers the ability to cancel certain special moves after their first hit. Every character has one designated special move that can be cancelled by pressing A plus B. If done correctly, the special cancel will tend to allow the character to recover faster, making the move far safer if blocked and allowing for more extensive combos and juggles. Additionally, Mark of the Wolves introduces the Just Defense mechanic, rewarding precise defense tactics. By successfully guarding an attack within a tight 7 frame window marked by a distinctive blue flash and guard animation, players gain several benefits including a small boost to health and a power gauge with each correct Just Defense, the option to execute a guard cancel, Maintaining guard meter integrity, unlike standard blocks, reduced block stun by 2 frames resulting in decreased pushback. This allows for rapid successive defenses and the potential to recover back into the TOP zone, reactivating its advantages. The Just Defense system can also work while in mid-air, despite the game having no air block mechanic. Like most Fatal Fury games, Garou Mark of the Wolves offer the players the ability to execute super moves. The game's super moves, however, are independent from the health bar. The new super meter in the game can hold two stocks. The first level is marked by the S power and the second by the P power, similar to the real bout series. The meter can be filled by attacking the opponent cancelling a special move, throwing the opponent, just defending an attack, or getting hit by the enemy. 
In some cases, a successful super move can also give you a little bit of meter. Each character has at least two super moves and all of them have the same input. Level 1 or S power supers are done with two quarter circles forward and either A or B, while level 2 or the P power super are done with two quarter circles forward and either C or D. Some characters also have a third hidden super move. These include Rock, Kim Dong Wan, Marco, B Janet, and Gato. These hidden supers require unique inputs depending on the character. Story wise, Mark of the Wolves is set a decade after the death of the notorious crime lord Giz Howard. The game's story centers around a new generation of fighters in the city of Sagan South Town. The central character is Rock Howard, the son of Geese, who has been raised by Terry Bogard. The main plot revolves around the King of Fighters Maximum Mayhem Tournament, organized by a mysterious patron known as Kane R. Heinlein. This tournament attracts fighters from various backgrounds, each with their own motives for participating in this event. Brock Howard enters the tournament to discover more about his past and his mother's whereabouts. As the story unfolds, it becomes clear that Kane, who is actually Rock's uncle, has his own ulterior motives for organizing the tournament. The narrative explores themes of legacy, redemption, and the struggle to break free from the shadows of the past. Characters like Rock, Terry, and the other fighters confront their personal demons and histories as they compete in the tournament. Mark of the Wolves not only dazzled players with its amazing gameplay, but also presented a cast of characters, each with a deep narrative, weaving a complex story of ambition, legacy, and personal growth. These include Rock Howard, the central figure of the story, Rock is the son of Geese Howard, a name synonymous with power and corruption, raised by his father's nemesis Terry Bogard after his mother's passing. Rock battles with his heritage. His journey in the tournament is a quest for self-discovery, seeking to understand his true nature and forge his own destiny apart from the shadows cast by his father. Terry Bogart, known in the fighting circles as the legendary Hungry Wolf, Terry is a former King of Fighters champion who has become a mentor to Rock. His participation in the tournament is not just about fighting but also guiding Rock away from the dark path Geese laid before him. Terry's story is one of redemption, hope, and the strength found in choosing one's family. B. Janet The charismatic leader of the pirates band known as the Lillian Knights, B. Janet sees the tournament as a means to elevate her boredom and finance her luxurious lifestyle, hoping to rob every valuable item that the tournament sponsor Kane owns. Kim dong and Kim Jae-hoon the proud sons of Kim Kapwon, the fan-favorite Taekwondo master who is always dedicated to justice. Eager to prove themselves and uphold their family's honor, Dong Kwon and Jae Hoon bring their inherited sense of righteousness and distinct fighting styles to the tournament, each seeking to establish their own legacy. Gato, a man of few words. Gato's presence is as mysterious as his mastery of martial arts is formidable. With a personal mission to find his father who apparently murdered Gato's mother, his path is marked by intense battles and the search for answers about his past that led him to the world of underground fighting. Hotaru Futaba The epitome of determination wrapped in a veneer of innocence. Hotaru's journey is fueled by her longing to reunite with her missing brother, believed to be Gato. Her fighting style, a blend of grace and agility, reflects her inner strength and the familial bonds she cherishes. The Griffin or Tizok Behind the mask of this behemoth of a fighter is a gentle giant, a wrestler who has become a hero in the eyes of his fans, especially children. As time passed, 
It seemed like he would be unbeatable until a mysterious man suddenly appeared and defeated him. Devastated by the loss, he has spent the following two years searching for that man. Seeing himself as a washed up has been by the time Mark of the Wolves begins, he enters the King of Fighters tournament in order to gain his passion for the ring and to hopefully find the mystery man. Marco Rodriguez, a dedicated student of Ryo Sakazaki, Marco embodies the discipline and strength of Kyokugen Ryu Karate. His entry into the tournament is a rite of passage, a way to honor his sensei and test the limits of his abilities. For some odd and unknown reasons, Marco was renamed as Kushnud Butt by SNK America. Thankfully, this was corrected in 2022 with the release of the King of Fighters 15, finally giving the character his original name. Freeman Shrouded in darkness, Freeman's tale is one of violence and enigma. He is a serial killer who kills for his own pleasure. He travels to Sagan Southtown when he learns of the King of Fighters Maximum Mayhem tournament, hoping to kill strong opponents. One of his victims was Kevin Ryan's partner, a former member of the SWAT forces. Oktomaru, the lighthearted only ninja apprentice of Andy Bogard and also Mai Shiranui. When Hokutomaru was about to complete his training, Andy sent him to Sagan Southtown so he could enter the King of Fighters Maximum Mayhem. Hokutomaru brings youthful energy and quick-footed tactics to the fray. Kevin Ryan Driven by a quest for justice after the murder of his partner, Kevin's story intertwines the meticulous nature of detective work with the raw intensity of hand-to-hand -hand combat. His pursuit for answers leads him to the heart of the tournament. Grant The sub-boss of the game. Grant is a mysterious masked fighter who was later revealed to be the old friend of Kane and Marie Heinlein, Rock's mother. He protected the siblings from the dangers of the Southtown slums under his real name, Abel. When Marie was sent away to live as Giza's wife, Abel chose to stay with Kane and watch over the boy as his father figure. 19 years before the game begins, Kane had enough of the slums and declared his ambitions for power. Determined to not abandon him, he also invited Abel to join. Abel agreed and took on the name Grant from then on. Kane R. Heinlein, the enigmatic organizer of the King of Fighters Maximum Mayhem. Kane is a man with a grand vision to seize control of Second Soundtown. His story is one of ambition, cunning, and a complex relationship with his confidant Grant. He is revealed to be Rock Howard's uncle. Each character in Garou Mark of the Wolves adds a unique thread to the narrative tapestry, with backstories that resonate with themes of family, honor, and personal growth. Fatal Fury Mark of the Wolves was originally released for Japanese arcades on November 26, 1999. It was first ported to the Neo Geo on February 2000 and to the Dreamcast on September 2001. The game did not receive a Neo Geo CD version as SNK had quietly abandoned the system before the game's release. For unknown reasons, the Neo Geo MVS and AES version of the game kept the Japanese title Garou Mark of the Wolves while the Dreamcast North American version was renamed Fatal Fury Mark of the Wolf. The game will later be ported to the PlayStation 2, Xbox Live, and eventually Switch, PC via Steam, PlayStation 4, and PlayStation Vita. The PlayStation 4, Vita, and Steam version of the game received an online update that added the much-requested rollback netcode, allowing for smooth online play. Upon release, Mark of the Wolves was hailed as the best Neo Geo game in terms of visuals. The game received unanimous positive reviews worldwide. In Japan, Game Machine listed Garou Mark of the Wolves on their January 1st, 2000 issue as being the most successful arcade game of the month. GameSpot named Mark of the Wolves the best fighting game of 2001. It was nominated for Outstanding Fighting Game Sequel by the National Academy of Video Game Trade Reviewers. But it was not just publications that praised the game. Fans around the world loved the new title for its deep gameplay mechanics, 
great characters and balanced roster. The game quickly gathered a large following that is still very much alive today, with tournaments worldwide pitting gamers against each other to see who is the best Garou Mark of the Wolves player. The success of Mark of the Wolves gave SNK the confidence for fast-tracking the development of a sequel to the game. But unfortunately, the company was facing a number of financial issues, including the failed Hyper Neo Geo 64, the expensive Neo Geo Land Game Center, the inability to compete with the Game Boy Color with their Neo Geo Pocket Color, and other factors. This led to SNK filing for bankruptcy in 2001, with all its IPs transferred to the newly formed Playmore Corporation, which later will be renamed SNK Playmore. Despite all these major changes, the original Mark of the Wolf staff kept working on the sequel, creating new characters, adding new moves to existing ones, hoping the game will be released. However, eventually, the sequel to Garou Mark of the Wolves would get cancelled. SNK's own artist Falcoon revealed that the game was about 70% done prior to cancellation. News and information about the cancelled sequel will remain unanswered up until 2022, when a character sheet was revealed showing that Garou 2 would have a base cast of approximately 20 characters, with all of the characters from the previous game returning and 6 newcomers added. In the same year, a CD found its way online which had assets from the cancelled game, including sprites for new moves and new characters, and even brand new stages. The Fatal Fury franchise has had its share of sequels, prequels, and remakes. After the release of the excellent Garou Mark of the Wolves and the cancellation of its sequel due to SNK's financial issues and eventual bankruptcy, the Fatal Fury franchise took a long hiatus. And while no new game was released since Mark of the Wolves, the Fatal Fury IP was not as dormant as many might think. Following the acquisition of SNK by Playmore and the company restructured to focus on the lucrative Pachinko slot machines, the Osaka-based company decided to use the Fatal Fury IP in their new Pachinko business. Over the years that followed, a number of Pachinko Fatal Fury games were released. The first one was Garou Densets The Legend of Wild Wolf. Released in October 2006, this game roughly borrows events from both Fatal Fury Wild Ambition and real bout Fatal Fury. However, the game is set during the first chapter of the IP. Players can choose to play either as Terry, Andy or Joe. In addition to the standard slot machine gameplay, various mini-games unique to each character can be triggered as bonus stages. Another fun feature allows players to dress Mai in different outfits. When fighting versus Billy Khan or Geese Howard, players are only allowed to play as Terry Bogart as a way to respect the canon and lore of the Fatal Fury franchise. They are given three options during the battle sequence to either attack, guard, or perform a combo. Many characters from the franchise make an appearance in the game, including characters from the Real Bout series. One notable addition, however, is the newly created character, Alice Nakata. Alice is a young South Town girl who quickly becomes a huge fan of Terry Bogard, following him almost everywhere. The character will end up making more pachinko appearances in the future, before making her way as a playable character in the King of Fighters 14. Less than one year after the release of Garou Densets The Legend of Wild Wolf, SNK Playmore announced a sequel titled Garou Densetsu Special. Unlike its predecessor, the trio of Terry Bogard, Andy Bogard, and Joe Higashi 
now travel together on screen during the game's idle scenes. The chance scenes from the first game were also expanded, randomly selecting one of four different sequences to take effect on the game's screen. Most of these sequences are presented in anime cutscenes. Almost every character from the Fatal Fury franchise make an appearance in the new Pachinko game, including characters from the Wild Ambition game like Tsugumi Sendo and Toji Sakata, or Alfred from the Dominated Mind Real Bout special game. Some Metal Slug characters also make cameo appearances. With the Pachinko business being lucrative, and with the success of the first two Fatal Fury Pachinko machines, SNK Playmore decided to team up with the Japanese company Daichi to release a new Fatal Fury Pachinko game in 2012. Titled Fatal Fury Premium, this game, yet again, retells the story of the first game, but this time in a completely different way. The game takes a more realistic approach to retelling the first chapter. Terry is no longer wearing his red jacket and cap, and instead sports his Mark of the Wolves outfit. While other characters like Raiden, Duck King, or even Mai Shiranui are almost unrecognizable. Alice Nakata, who made her debut in the first pachinko game of Fatal Fury, also has a sizable role in the story of the new game. Garuden said Supremium takes so many liberties with the story, like having Mai Shiranui with no Andy Bogard in sight, or making Wolfgang Krauser an important part of the first chapter of the saga. Fatal Fury Premium absolutely feels like a what if Fatal Fury was adapted to a Hollywood live action movie in the 90s. Besides the Pachinko games, three mobile Fatal Fury titles were released. The first one titled Garodensets South Town Adventure where you play as a young boy exploring South Town and learning about the characters. The second mobile game was a visual novel titled Garodenset Stray Dog Stray Wolf, which tells a story that ties together the events of Real Bot Fear of Fury with Garou Mark of the Wolves. Another handheld game called Fear of Fury Mobile was released on January 9, 2007 for mobile phones using Java. Unlike the previous two, this third title was a fighting game, using newly created 3D sprites that absolutely do not look great. It was developed by a company known as Livin Mobile Limited. Fatal Fury Mobile's gameplay was based on Fatal Fury Special and featured 8 playable characters. Terry, Andy, Kim, Joe, Big Bear, Mai, Cheng, and Jubei Yamada. The game included various different modes such as quick play, single match, tournament, training, and survival. Throughout the years, several re-releases, collections, and soundtracks were released for the Fatal Fury franchise. The most notable one is the Fatal Fury 15th Anniversary box set. This massive box included 6 CDs featuring the entire music of the franchise, as well as a DVD which contains a special visual novel that retells the events of all the games from Terry Bogart's perspective. Voice actors from the game reprised their roles for this special project, which has first debuted during the 2006 Tokyo Game Show event. Fans of the Fatal Fury series had to wait for years before a new chapter was announced. Following the successful release of the King of Fighters 15, and during the massive EVO tournament of 2022, SNK announced its next project, a new chapter in the highly successful Fatal Fury series. A year later, SNK revealed the name of the new game, as well as the first snippets of footage. Titled Fatal Fury City of the Wolves, this new game will serve as a sequel 
to both the original Fatal Fury games and Mark of the Wolves, promising characters from both series making a comeback to complete the story. The Fatal Fury franchise had a long and very eventful history. And one thing is clear, the franchise is far from over. I hope you guys enjoyed this documentary, don't forget to like and subscribe, check out the history of the King of Fighters as well to know how that game came to be. And a big shout out to my channel's patrons for supporting the channel and making this possible. Consider becoming a patron to get early access as well as some exclusive goodies. Link is in the description below. Until next time, thank you guys for watching.